Okay. Um, the third inequality that we are going to see is what is called as the uh, Hoftings inequality. Another very powerful inequality, um, concentration inequality. Uh, again, the word concentration uh, is just to say, I mean, the Chebyshev, for example, illustrates it very well, right? So, uh, I, so if this is the mean, you know, I'm asking what is the chance that things concentrate close to the mean? In other words, what is the chance that a rare event happens, right? So, this, these inequalities give an upper bound on the rare events, right? So, which means that most of the times things are going to concentrate around the mean, right? So, mean is like a typical value. Typically, you, on, on, you, you mean, if you want to take a guess, you will take the average as the guess, right? How much around the average do, you know, do you expect to find the values um, is what these concentration inequalities give us an idea about. Okay, so what is the Hoftings inequality? Well, Hoftings says that let us x1, x2, dot, 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 xn be uh, independent random variables where each xi belongs to some range ai comma bi. Um, now you have n different independent random variables and now you have let us say x bar is just the average of these random variables. Okay. So, this is a new random variable that I am creating from my um, x1 to xn. For example, I may toss a coin as, as simple as that, right? So, I may toss a coin, the coin falls heads means the value is 1, tail means the value is 0, right? So, which means that each of my coin toss is independent. In this case, you know, let us say they are also identically distributed that it is the same coin that I am tossing, though Hofting does not need identically distributed assumption. But let us say I toss the same coin n different times, each xi takes value 0 with probability half, 1 with probability half, right. Um, and now I might ask, you know, I might do an average of the values that I have seen so far, right. And I, and I want to ask how far is this average deviating from the expected value of the average, right. So, um, I might ask the question, what is the probability that uh, the average, the sample average uh, concentrates around the uh, expected value of the average, right. So, this is my random variable of interest and I am asking what is x bar minus e of x bar, right. So, um, and Hofting says that the basic version of Hofting says that the, the, the probability that this deviation is greater than or equal to some value t um, is at most e to the minus 2 n t squared um, by, you know, so let us, let us make it simpler. I say, let us say all the, all the, um, all the random variables are bounded within the same range, right. So, a comma b. So, then this would be b minus a squared. Okay. So, this is an interesting uh, inequality, right. So, again, some of you might have seen this earlier. So, this is telling me that um, so, this t kind of controls how much am I deviating, how much if I do the experiment um, and I see an outcome which is the sample mean um, and then there is an expected value for this and I ask the question how much am I deviating, right. So, what is my tolerance level? Let us say till t deviation is okay for my algorithm, right. So, but then greater than t is a problem and I want to know what is the chance that a wrong thing, the algorithm, wrong thing happens in the algorithm, right. So, which means that I want to understand what is the chance that if I do this experiment, I, I collect x1 to xn, maybe these are data points, maybe these are coin tosses, whatever they are and now I do some averaging, I get x bar and now I ask the question, I look at x bar and you know, before I you know actually do the experiment, I want to know if I look at x bar, what is the chance that it is more than t units away from the expected value. And this Hofting says that, you know, this is upper bounded by e to the minus 2 n squared by b minus a squared. So, let us look at, let us unpack this statement a little bit, right. So, for now in the coin toss example, right. So, let us say if I tossed a coin n different times, so each, each of the coin can take heads or tail values, which means the value is either 0 or 1. So, which means in that case, um, for that example, let us use a different color, 
my a will be 0, b will be 1, right. So, a, every x i the i th outcome, i th coins outcome at coin tosses outcome is either 0 or 1 which means the range is 0 comma 1, right. So, which means that for that specific coin toss example, um, Hofting is essentially saying that probability of x bar which is just the fraction of heads that I have seen, right. So, uh, x bar minus uh, expected value of x, right. So, let us say if I toss the coin with some probability p, expected value of x bar, uh, but if I if I toss the coin with some probability p and it is the same coin that I toss every time, so then this value is just p, right. So, and I am asking what is the chance that this value is greater than some t and what this is saying is that this is at most e power minus 2 n t squared, b is 1, a is 0, so b minus a squared is just 1. So, now this says that this probability that I am deviating by a large amount goes down exponentially with t. That is if I am asking for a rarer and rarer event which means that t becomes larger and larger, then this probability becomes smaller and smaller because you know it is e to the minus something and it is not just going smaller and smaller, it is decreasing at an exponential rate, right. So, it is e power minus 2 n t squared. Right. So, if I if I increase t to let us say 2 t, then it is this guy is becoming e to the minus 2 n 4 t squared, right. So, so the rate at which it goes down is exponential, right. So, which means that with very, it, it you know the, the rare events become smaller and smaller, right. So, the upper bound on the rare events become fast, smaller very fast, that is one thing. The other thing that we, this also tells us is that, you know, it is not just the, you know, how rare the event is that we are worried about, you know, how many coins do I toss, that also matters, right. So, the more the number of coins I toss, the more confident I can be about my sample average being close to the true true, true probability p, that is also true, right. So, if I, if I toss the same coin 10 times and then I look at the number of fraction of heads and I ask how close is it to p uh, versus if I toss the coin 100 100 times or even 1000 times and then you know I again do the fraction of heads and I ask how close is it to p, obviously right. So, you are going to expect that the chance that I toss it 100 times and then the average you know being close to p is has a large deviation uh, is going to be much lesser than just tossing 10 times because just by chance I might get a larger deviation when I just toss 10 times or 5 times, right. So, the number of times you are tossing will also you know affect the bounds and it is and Hofting says it affects the bounds in a very fundamental way. In, a, in, in other words, if I if I increase the number of uh, times I toss the coin, my bound becomes stronger for the same t, right. So, if the same rarity of events that I am thinking of, uh, if I increase the number of coin tosses, I become confident, exponentially more confident with every increase in coin toss, right. So, that is what this is essentially saying is, right. So, the the how confident I am that you know x bar is close to p, in other words how confident I am, I am that x bar is the deviation is large, you know that value the smaller that value, you know if this value is let us say 0 0.01, then that means that you know for, for some value of t let us say 15 is that value of t, right. So, I am just throwing some numbers here. Um, it says that you know the large my cutoff for large deviation is 15 and I am saying that anything above 15 is a very rare event, right. So, that is not going to happen more than 1 in 100 times, right. So, if you repeat the experiment 100 times maybe one time at max, I mean this is also an upper bound, right? at max I will have it that that event will happen only once, right. So, that is what Hofting is saying, right. So, again there are so many applications of Hofting in, in machine learning, statistical learning theory. Uh, we will also see a lot of applications in dealing with scale as well, right. So, as we as we try to understand how to use um, randomness in our algorithms better and better. Mm -hmm.